When your tank needs filling, stop off at Caltex. Because when you buy 20 litres or more, you get a free glass. The more times you fill up, the more glasses you collect. So tank up at Caltex for your fill of glasses. After all, you never know when you'll be needing more. Stand by and action. Just keep driving until we tell you to stop. Yep.
system like a cup. And things were running rough. Then came a brand new Mitsubishi. With three diamonds on the front and a V6 in the engine bay. With fuel injected grunt. It had electric this, power that, and a ton of room inside. So we piled on in and went home for a cold one. The new 3-litre V6 fuel-injected Mitsubishi V3000. More tow than an Aussie tank. Just like we were last year. Broken down and busted. Oh, damn this Aussie gear. It's the Kiwi, sir. They've done it again. Then came a brand new Mitsubishi. It looked different from the front. But with that V6 in the engine bay, she still had tons of grunt. So we hooked her up just like before. But this time, we played a trick. Lucky, she's gonna do it. Mate, it makes an Aussie look sick. The new 1990 Mitsubishi V3000. More tow than an Aussie tank? my girl Shirley. We're going to be married. Dear John, oh how I hate to write. Dear John, Shirley. I must let you know tonight that my love for you is gone. So I'm sending you the song. like him, John. He's your brother. So due to you forever, dear John. Play it again, John. Very fast, very fast. Now for something more subdued. A little while ago, we heard of mysterious goings on on the country roads about 20 kilometers north of Auckland. So we sent Special Agent Maria Kona along to investigate. I thought I'd nip through the back door. Oh, how nice to see you. How about come down and meet the people? Why not? This is Nick Hurlich, and this is Nick's personal military motor museum. This is my brother Andrew and co-owner of the museum. My nephew Millen, my nephew Peter, and my older son Alan, and younger son Kevin. Hi. Nice to meet you all, fellas. What do you think? Smashing collection of vehicles that is. Do you think you could take us around? Oh, better still, I think we can go on manoeuvres. Great! A convoy! As you've guessed, the museum is a family affair and a passionate hobby. Nick and Andy's collection has grown considerably over the years. So, Nick, how many vehicles have you got in your collection? We've got six vehicles, uh, two Jeeps and uh, the Dodge 6x6, International 6x6, Duty Baker 6x6 and a 4x4 four four Bedford. We had to actually uh, completely pull them apart, sandblast them, paint them and uh, completely rebuild them. How did this whole military collection start for you? I suppose it's a uh, desire my brother Andy and I uh, remember the wartime days, always wanting a Jeep and uh, finally uh, we actually got one Jeep and from there it migrated on to uh, the next one and so forth like that. Hey, Andy. Hi. So, who's the real military vehicle nut, you or Nick? 
Oh, I think you could say we both are. Tell us about the Studebaker. It's a 320 cubic inch flathead six. It's called a US six, and it was as supplied to the Russians during the Second World War. This particular example was supplied to the Australian Army and uh, Nick bought it in uh, Australia and uh, spent a lot of time and made it look uh, like this. It drives very, very well. This drive is, is also a lot of fun to drive. It's six-wheel drive. It's got a flathead six-cylinder engine, so it's, um, it's big and slow, and it's got very heavy steering. And it's air-conditioned? All the time. <laughs> Kevin! Oh, there you are. Hello. Kevin, can you tell us a bit about the Bedford? Yeah, this is a 1960 to RL Bedford, ex-New Zealand Army, uh, used mainly as a personnel carrier for approximately 20, 25 years. Now, it's a monster. What's it like to drive? Uh, it's not too bad. It's, it's a little heavy, very tall, but no, great to drive. Alan, this is a fairly modern one. What's this one called? Uh, this is an Australian Built International, 1970. It was used for uh, towing five and a half inch uh, guns. This is a post-war French Hoskis Jeep around 1957 vintage. It's got the same motor as the older Jeeps, a 2.2 litre flathead motor. This vehicle took three years for a ground up rebuild by Nick and Andy, but uh, I just watched from afar. The military vehicles in this collection are in pristine condition. Much work has been put into them by Nick and Andy. But why collect and restore them? I think one of the main reasons, probably a preservation of something historical. It'll be a once only type of thing. And the other thing, um, I think as a child, my brother and I at school were probably of that age, nine or ten years old, that we remember the US forces here in 1942 onwards. To restore a Jeep, if you worked every weekend, it would take you around about 14 months to 18 months. Restoration work is carried out in Nick's purpose-built workshop. Nick and Andy often video the progress of the work for posterity. Here, for example, is the Dodge truck undergoing restoration. We like to dismantle them completely and completely rebuild them. By that I mean if parts have to re be replaced, we do it at the time as they're being rebuilt. And consequently, uh, they finish up being painted and then we have no further trouble. So we give them a new life. We support uh, the Anzac Day parades. Any major uh, event, they ask could we put on a display. We don't believe in having any vehicles not mobile. So, Nick, behind every great man, there must be an even greater woman. Oh, there is. Hello, Betty, how are you? Hi, Betty. Betty, what kind of guy is Nick? Nick is a very interesting man who enjoys helping people. <laughs> Spends too much time in the shed? Nick does spend a lot of time down in his shed, but did you see his bed at the back where he sleeps most nights? <laughs> So you're just going to keep on adding to the collection? What's well, the future for it? Yes, the future, we would hope the, uh, our next generation of sons would look after them and continue with them, but um, that, that's a bit unknown at this stage. So we just play it by year as time goes on. Nick and Andy's museum in Fenilpai is private, but can be visited by arrangement. Good on you, Nick. Preserving a little bit of history there. Well done.